I don't know of anything that makes me feel more like a Yurok man than coming to the shore with a boatload of salmon. Their genetics have been feeding the Yurok people's genetics for thousands of years. But to take that away, I think that's a, um, a travesty in itself. 300 years ago, you know, what was this river like? It was pristine, it was beautiful. This is the creator's country. All the nutrients and all the great things that come from the upper basin were deposited down in the lower basin and out in the ocean. Fish came from the ocean and they brought with them these marine derived nutrients and all the great things that the ocean provides uh, to the land. And that was abruptly ended a hundred years ago. When those dams were put in, it cut the river in half. The shock to the ecosystem was immense and we're still feeling it today. The reliance on salmon as a staple was substantial. They uh, pretty much extinguished the spring run in the Klamath, the one that was everybody depended on the most. I think dams, particularly in the West, they're sort of these vestiges of manifest destiny. It's sort of this idea that you'll go West and conquer the wilderness, people somehow romanticize. But in a lot of cases, like on the Klamath, the dams really aren't worth keeping. Their harm is far greater than their benefits. Our spirituality, our way of life, and who we are depends on the health of the Klamath Basin. We know that the river can repair itself with the removal of the dam. Dam removal is a massive project that will reconnect the lower and upper Klamath River. We need enough water for, for the aquatic resources, whether it's fish or insects, ecosystem services. And if water is constantly being diverted to agriculture or for other needs, we're gonna have a hard time restoring the river. Just being a tribal member fisherman and, and subsisting off the river and having my family here, relying on the river, that's a major part of who, who we are as people. Lamprey is an ancient species of fish that um, lives here on the Klamath River. It's a very important food source for Yurok people and tribal people throughout the Klamath Basin. We've subsisted on lamprey um, since the beginning of time, and so we're trying to continue that tradition. They are born in the river and they go out to the ocean and grow to adulthood and then come back to the river to spawn. But now over 50% of their spawning habitat has been taken away by these dams. Lamprey rely on a very specific type of habitat to, to rear in and they need real fine sediment because dams block sediment transfer. There's a large section of river downstream of the dams where there's not enough sediment for, for lamprey. Those reservoirs have terrible water quality, whether it's low dissolved oxygen, uh, toxic algae, high temperature, and that poor quality water is released downstream into the river and lamprey and everything else has to swim in that water. dams, diversions, our agricultural practices were all developed assuming the hydrology of the early 20th century would last forever. And that has not come to pass. We can't manage water in the 21st century like we did in the 20th because there's simply not as much water. We have had to spend a lot of money and time to get the government to do what's right and to live up to their trust obligations to the resource and the people who was protecting fishing, hunting, gathering rights for us was the federal government. And they failed to do so in every era. They failed to do it when the dams were placed. They failed to do it when they created the reservation and our lands were stolen. Each generation has had 
at impact by bad decisions being made and by the government not living up to um, its responsibilities um, to our people at every stage. In 2001, pretty epic drought, the farmers had their water shut off to protect fish. It was the first time in the history of the Climate Irrigation Project the government had not diverted water to the project. And people were really upset. So in 2002, they made water deliveries. Uh, and against the warning of downriver tribes, uh, we had very low flows. It was really hot. Water conditions soured. And when the fish returned in September, there was a massive fish kill. And as many as 70,000 adult salmon died on the Yurok Reservation in the week leading up to California Indian Day. I knew in my heart that uh, the temperatures were going to be high and with extremely low flows that we were going to have a fish kill. It was very horrific because there were thousands of fish that were coming down the river. So fish would they'd swim along and they would gulp for air. They'd swim a little bit further and they'd just flop over and you know be dead. If you can imagine 70,000 dead adult Chinook, you're talking about fish that are you know, this big and this wide, lining the river five to 10 deep. It was horrible. We actually took 500 pounds of um, salmon back to the Department of Interior and uh, laid it out on the steps to draw additional attention to what occurs with flawed water policies. It's a traumatic event, and there's sort of nothing in the oral histories of these tribes that describes something like this. But I think that galvanized tribes to build a coalition to, do, to make a change. Tribal leaders took all of that, kind of that despair that people felt after the fish kill, and kind of turned that into something positive, which was a 20-year campaign that's resu resulting in the biggest dam removal in the history of the world. As a colleague of mine used to say, eventually the Lord calls all the dams home. On this side we have Prairie Creek flowing by and it's, it's not an ideal channel for a stream to be in just because it's really confined. Uh, there's not a lot of complexity. There's no point bars, there's no turns in the stream, there's nowhere for fish to spawn. What we've done here is create this new channel, which is more like what the stream used to look like. So it's more like a natural functioning stream. This is a really important project. It's, it's not on the Klamath River, but it's within our ancestral territories. The York Tribal Constitution um, dictates that we restore and protect uh, the waters and the lands within our ancestral territories. This is a piece of a, a larger puzzle where we're trying to restore as much riverine habitat as we can. By removing the Klamath River dams, we're going to open up 400 miles of additional spawning habitat. That'll have benefits for everything associated with the river, whether it's salmon or lamprey or bears or eagles or even killer whales out in the ocean everything will be impacted in a positive way. There's a lot of restoration work that's gonna go on here for salmonid habitat and, and just trying to get the ecosystem back to where it should be. Wolves just showed back up on the Klamath Basin. Condor was just reintroduced in the Klamath Basin and we're pulling off the biggest salmon restoration project the world's ever seen. So we're starting to put the Klamath back together and I think if nothing else, I hope this inspires people everywhere else that you can do these things, you can win against long odds, and you can fix things. If it weren't for tribal people, our ceremonies, and traditional knowledge, those dams wouldn't be coming out.